But he had that experience, and he could show me how it was done so that I could learn. He taught by example and showed me just how bad I was at bowling. <laughs> that he could flaunt me any time, without even trying. It, it seemed that way. And, uh, but, but through his example and through his training, he taught me that, that I could enjoy the sport with him. But most of all, he taught me to have a love of God. And through that love of God, he showed me how to play the roles that he is in that, that I may not be in yet. He showed me the role of how a husband should be. He's taught me that through, through how he treats my mother, how, how loving and compassionate that he needs to be. Just as uh, we got back, we were on our way back from the men's retreat, and mom had given me a call, and dad was driving, and so he couldn't answer the phone at the moment. Uh, but I talked with mom, she was feeling sick. She was just not well, which is why she isn't here today, actually. But, uh, but we took, the first stop we took, the first thing I noticed was that he was on the phone talking with my mother, checking on how she was, and saying, I love you, dear, and I want you to know that. Uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 25, I want to read that real quick, and it's a, it tells us how, how husbands should love their wives. It says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. My dad is so self-sacrificing, and I joke around about sometimes how it's like, yeah, he gave up golf. He gave up a day of golf to spend time with my family and my mother. And, but, I mean, it's beyond that. And he showed me that through his example. He showed me, and as today's Father's Day the theme, I suppose, he showed me what it's like to be a good father. He, uh, I remember there was a time when, when we were younger that he was uh, working long hours. He was working nights, and, and he was just really, really busy. But I, never, I could never remember a time where I felt like Dad didn't spend time with me. He would always make it a point to take the family and go do something recreational or, or, or just spend time in God's Word together as a family. And, uh, and that just encouraged me. Uh, and he disciplined us when necessary. And that's, a, that's something that's really looked down upon in society today. Oh, you can't discipline your kids. That's cruel. It's unusual. Why, why would you do that? But in Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 11 through 12, it says, My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord, or loathe his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. We also read in scripture that discipline isn't joyful at the moment, but that it produces the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And dad knew that, that we need to be, when we needed to be disciplined, he followed through with that, but he did it out of love, not out of anger or out of his, or being tired and grumpy. He, he did it out of love for us. So to end this, short chat about my father, I want to share something that I wrote down real quick. Sitting here today, talking about him, my goal isn't to show how great a man my father is. Uh, if I wanted to inflate his ego, I would let him take me golfing. <laughs> and I already did that this week. So. Anyway. But, but if you were to ask that man, sitting there, if you were to ask him, how he's such a great father, how he's such a great husband, and how he's such a great mentor, he wouldn't give himself any of the credit. He wouldn't say, well, it's through my experience that I know how I need to be. It's through God's word. It's through, it's through his love of God. And, and it's through that love of God that he has learned to love his wife more. He has learned to love us children. And if there is any characteristic that I wish to emulate from my father, it's the love that he has for his God, for our God. And that is the character that I wish to emulate. And I'm glad I got the opportunity to honor you today, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing a good job. I really love how Jonathan said, his God and then our God. It shows the transition of faith. Next person uh, who I want to share a few minutes about his father is John Mark McCloy.
Is that good? <laughs> um, I want to make something <clears throat> known that I don't think I've ever made known, and that's that I respect my father very, very much, even though I probably annoy him and try to make him angry all the time. <laughs> but the thing is, there are a lot of things I respect about him, and uh, one thing is he Nothing keeps him down. He's had multiple powerful incidents, and <laughs> he's managed to put everything away before going to the hospital. And he doesn't stay there for very long because he just gets right back at it. And he's just really ambitious. And that's something that I hope to someday have that he has. And he takes care of his family. He really gives us so much, and I don't think I show enough thanks for that, but I am very thankful to have him as a father, and I hope that I can at least be half the father that he is. And he really, he really serves people, and I try my best to serve the way he does. I don't know if I ever will be able to, but I will keep trying. But um, I guess that's all I really have. But I, I love you, Dad. And it's just the first time I've ever said that, <laughs> which I will say it more. Um, thank you for being such a good dad and for taking care of me and our family. <laughs> and if it wasn't for you, I would probably be much more promiscuous. So. I appreciate you being my father. And thank you for listening. Sorry, it's so short. I tried to do the bare minimal. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I almost started crying. He was like, I love you, Dad. <laughs> that was touching hard. Um, he was, John Mark um, was very willing to, even though he doesn't like talking in front of people, he said, yeah, I'll talk about my dad. I want to. And that was really good. Uh, another young man that uh, was willing to speak about his dad is Tyler Johnson, so come and finish it off for us. I make this as just possible, <laughs> but actually the first time that Uncle Micah came up to me and said, you do talk to everybody on Sunday about how much I like about my love about my dad. And he was just talking about all this other stuff, you know, what, what, do you th what do you know about him? What do you love about him? What, what do you think he's like? And so I thought about it, but as soon as he said, what do you think about him? The first thing that came to mind was humor. And I, and I was like, that best describes him as much as possible. So, but yeah, I mean, literally, if you just sneak a camera into our house, you'll see him busting up laughing like nobody's business. And I mean, I really enjoy that, especially since he's always the one that's making up the jokes. <laughs> but and sometimes even he tries to be as funny as possible. I mean. He does a lot of funny things. I mean, another thing that he's told me about when I was really young, and I don't know the full details about the story, but he's told me about it. And if I'm wrong, you can ask my dad, so <laughs> I'll probably get that from him. But, but usually he's always so funny. So one story that he told me was in Puyallup, I was, I was very young. I, I don't know how young, maybe probably just a little bit, two months, three months, I don't know. And my sister was there. She's probably two or three, and um, they were out roller skating. And dad was pushing. My dad was pushing the um, stroller, and so we ha we were, they were just going through Puyallup, and there was this big 